بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم بیک ون امپارٹنٹ ٹائپ آف لے آؤٹس آر سیلولر لے آؤٹس ان دیز لے آؤٹس ایوری سیل کنٹینز اے گروپ آف مشینز وچ آر ڈیڈیکیٹڈ ٹو دا پروڈکشن آف اے فیملی آف پارٹس ون آف دا پرابلمز ہائر از ٹو آئیڈینٹیفائی اے فیملی آف پارٹس دیٹ ریکوائر دا سیم گروپ آف مشینز سو وی ول سی ہاؤ وی ڈو دیٹ these layouts are also called as group technology layouts so uh, in this factory uh, there are total eight parts that are being manufactured but the flow of three of them is shown so it seems to be a job shop that has total 12 machines and different parts are made uh, using these machines and they are finally moved to the assembly area so you could notice that the flow of every part is very different than the other For example, the part A is first processed on machine 1, then machine 2, machine 4, machine 8, machine 10, and then it moves to the assembly area. Similarly, the part B is processed on machine 5, first, then it goes to machine 7, machine 11, machine 12, and then it goes to the assembly area. The flow for part uh, C is very different as well. It first goes to machine three, then machine six, machine nine, and finally to the assembly area. And there are five other parts as well. And every one of them is to be processed on uh, some of these 12 machines, but the sequence is different. Uh, and we have to try to uh, arrange these machines in different cells. And we will do that by first actually grouping the parts together that require the same machines for their processing. So that is the basic idea. So this matrix shows a total eight parts and 12 machines. And you could see uh, the machines that are required for each part. For example, part A is to be processed on machine one, machine two, machine four, machine eight, and machine 10. Similarly, for example, part C is to be processed on a machine three, machine six, machine nine, and you could notice for other parts as well. So there are total eight parts, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, 12 machines. So we have to actually group the parts that require same machines together so that we can uh, process uh, the same parts, the parts requiring the same machines uh, in the same cell. So that is the basic idea. So we can do that by interchanging rows and columns. And eventually a matrix is obtained where the X marks are all concentrated near the diagonal and that will be uh, the cell. So we can either uh, move the rows or the columns. For example, uh, the part, sorry, for example, the uh, machines one and four are required by the same part. So machine one is required by part A, D and F, and machine four is also required by part A, D and F. So we can group these two machines together. So we have actually moved the column of machine four here. Similarly, if you have a closer look, you could see that uh, some of the parts require the uh, same machines. For example, part A requires machine one, two, four, eight and 10, and part D also requires machine one, two, four, eight and 10. So we can move the part D closer to the part A. So we are now moving the row. In the previous case, we moved the column, column for machine four. You could also notice that uh, uh, part four, sorry, machine four and machine eight 
machine four and machine eight are required by the same part. So the part A, D, and F. So we can move actually machine eight closer to machine four. So that is uh, that has been done here. So machine eight has been moved here. So now you could see that uh, the uh, the X marks are clustering together. So you could, of course, have some other thoughts as well. For example, uh, we could see that part F requires machines one, four, and eight. And uh, another part that is, uh, that is requiring the similar machine is part D. Not exactly the same machines, but similar machines. So part D requires uh, machine one, four, and eight, but uh, machine two and machine 10 required by part D are not required by part F, but we can move the part F above because it has similarities uh, with part A and D. Another thing that you could notice that machine two and machine 10 are required by the same parts, two and 10, are required by the same parts, parts A and D. So you can group them together as well. So machine 10 has been moved uh, closer to uh, machine two, I mean that is in the same cell. So we can play this way, and you could actually notice other similarities, for example, part C, and part G, for example, C and G, require the similar machines. Three of them are common, machine three, six, and nine, but a part G also requires machine 12, and you can move them together as well. So doing this way, moving the parts requiring similar machines together are moving the machines that are required by the same parts together, we can come up with uh, some clustering uh, of, the, of the machines to make the cells. So this is one of the possible solution. You, you could think of slightly different solution as well. So one part family that we have made comprises parts A, D, and F. And based on this family, the cell that we have made comprises machines one, two, four, eight, and 10. Similarly, another part family comprises parts C and G, and uh, the cell of the machines that actually will process these two parts comprises machine three, six, and nine, and the last cell comprises machines five, seven, 11, and 12 that are required by uh, this part family that comprises uh, parts B, E, and H. Now you could notice that all parts in this uh, cell one, if I call it uh, cell one and this cell two and cell three and corresponding part families to be family one, family two and family three. So all processes for part family one comprising part A, D and F can be uh, done in the cell one. But Part G in cell two has one operation actually that is not uh, possible in that cell, that is uh, operation to be performed on machine 12. And machine 12 is the part of uh, cell number three. Similarly, one of the parts in family three, that is part E, does require an operation that cannot be performed within cell three, and that is operation on machine six. So the point here is that we have to do two more things. Now, after making the cells and after deciding the part families, we have to actually make a proper layout within the cells and sometimes between the cells. So 
apparently the cell if the, the cell one will have the machines arranged in this sequence so first machine one two then machine four eight and ten if the sequence of the operations is the one that is mentioned and same is true for cell two and cell three so arrangement of the machines within the cells is important and secondly the positioning the machines that are common for the parts of two cells their position is also very critical so these uh, two additional considerations are also important in designing cellular layouts so now you could see that this is cell one comprising uh, machines one two four eight and ten cell two comprises machine three six and nine and machine uh, and cell three comprises machines five seven eleven and twelve now the sequence of operations of part A is the one as shown. And another part in this cell one to be processed in cell one is part D. So part D also has uh, the same flow. But part F does not require machine two and machine 10. So it requires machine one, four and eight. So part F will actually move from machine one to machine four, then machine eight, and finally to the assembly area. Similarly, in cell two, the part C requires machine three, six, and nine, part C. So from machine three to six, and then to nine, and finally to the assembly area. But part G, apart from machine three, six, and nine, also requires machine 12. So it will move uh, something like uh, first to machine three, then to machine six, then to machine nine, and finally to machine 12, and then to the assembly area. So positioning machine 12 is very important, and it is at an ideal location in this case. It is toward the end of cell three and and here the last operation that is required on uh, part G. So this is the flow for part G. So positioning of machine 12 is very important. Now regarding cell number three, so part B requires uh, machine five, seven, 11, and 12. So sequence is shown here. Now the part E requires machine six first and then five and 12. So it will be processed here. The part E will start from here. Then it will move to uh, uh, five and then 12. So from here, it will move to machine five and finally to machine 12 and then to, to the assembly area. And Part H requires seven, 11, and 12. H will start with seven, then 11, and 12, and finally to the assembly area. Now you could have also noticed that, for example, this machine 12 is required by parts G, B, E, and H. Machine 12 is required by part G, part B, E, and H. So one very important aspect in job shops is uh, scheduling the jobs. Now, for example, if four or three out of the four or two out of the four jobs arrive simultaneously at machine number 12, how will they be scheduled? And you could uh, notice for other machines as well, like machine number seven or machine number uh, six, for example. So that is an important aspect. But now this layout is much better than the original ones. Machines are arranged. And you could notice that the layout within each cell is a product layout. Uh, but as a whole, uh, the layout for these 12 machines uh, is a process layout because we have grouped the machines to Gather based on the requirement 
and that is based on the product families that they will process. What are the benefits of cellular layouts? Reduced material handling and transit time, reduced setup time, reduced work and process inventory, better use of human resources and better, uh, better scheduling, easier to control uh, and automate. So I hope you have got a basic idea of cellular layouts. Thank you.